Only once before did so many people see a game in Ireland, and those who came early were glad for two reasons. Number one, they got in. Number two, they saw the lads from Tyrone and the boys from Dublin contest a very interesting minor final. Taka train the Nashorn come on lower class Gael. A pray by a good dang and a coin your errand. I can say, a salah her kahav I'm sure of a line, I can shim she took at her, and the ashog no fear. The first half of the minor game was closely contested, and at half time the sides were level at three points each. However, Tyrone made full use of the win in the second half, and outplaying their lighter rivals, once again brought the minor title to the mountains of Pomeroy. Our American cousins were with us too. Men like Tom McNamara, John O'Donnell, Harry Grimes, men whose efforts did so much to make last year's final such a success. We went to them in 1947. They came to us in 1948. Gradually, the ceremony was moving toward its climax. Mr. Sean T. O'Kelly, the President of Ireland, and Mrs. O'Kelly arrive on the Hogan stand and are greeted. People prominent in all walks of life are watching and are waiting. Then, to the strains of Irish martial airs, the Artane Boys Band starts the parade. No matter how often one sees this sight, it is ever a thrill. And here they are, the band, and then Mayo, led by their captain, John Ford, and Cavan by Commandant John Joe O'Reilly. What thirty fine men they are! Army officers, medical men, bank officials, farmers, clerks, students. But above all, footballers and Irishmen. His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Walsh, Archbishop of Chum, is escorted to the field by the President of the GAA. The crowd rises, the teams face the tricolour for the national anthem. So, any second, the crowd will let go with a cheer as the ball is thrown in and the battle for 1948 honours is on. Cavan, favoured by a strong B, settled down immediately. And the opening minutes, Peter Donahue scores a point, the first of many, but one that turned out very important an hour later. The champion from Ulster dominated the first half play. Tony Ty, Victor Sherlock and Phil Brady paving the way for scores. Bit by bit, they sent Ulster hopes high, and the West, more or less, in the dumps. Attacked repeatedly, with Paddy McAndrew and Paddy Prendergast their staunchest defenders, but Cavan's defence stood solidly. Acton and Gilvari tested that defence many times, and a wide is met with obvious disapproval. For Cavan, Paddy Smith. Desi Benson and those stalwarts John Joe O'Reilly and Simon Dignan rose to the occasion. Play out in the centre of the field, these males swinging into the attack. But that attack is broken up and the crowd is certainly enjoying itself. Eamon Mongi clears for Mayo, Mayo attacking once again, but once again it's Simon Dignan clearing down the field. To where? Mongi clears out again, and it's Mayo attacking. And just before half-time, they have a narrow wide. Half-time, Cavan 3-2, Mayo not not. Plans are made in the dressing rooms, and the band holds the stage on the field. Mayo had the wind in the second half, and promptly went into the attack. And soon it was Mayo's chance to cheer, for they had a point. Back they came again, but after Langham sent to Mulderig, Duke snapped it up and cleared up the field. But Mayo returned and had a wife. The crowd were cheering everything at this stage because the tempo was rising. Doonan takes a free, it goes upfield, and soon Joe Stafford is going on a solo run, heading straight for the Mayo goal. And it's only a matter of seconds until Mick Higgins rattles the net with the fine cavern goal. And the crowd, well, just look at them and listen to them. Play out in the center of the field again. Mayo swinging into the attack once more. 
scores came quickly and thrilled just as frequent. Doonan, under pressure in the cabin goal, tries to clear, but a shot is sent to the cabin net, and the swaying crowd at Hill City is cheering as well as swaying. Back come Mayo again, and the ball is in the net once more. But all this time, Cavan remained in front, and the crowd really let themselves go. Out in the centre of the field once again, it's Dignan, but he's beaten this time, and Carney sends the ball lobbing down towards the Cavan goal mouth. High fielding, good catching, all mark these stages of the game, as backs tackle forward in a dying effort to keep them out. And then the forward is brought down in the square. Referee Flaherty sends the players back behind, for this is a penalty. And Corey Carney, with his hands on his hips, is walking up to take it. He takes it and sends it rasping into the back of the net. And Mayo are nearer Cavan, but Cavan are still out there in front. 4-4 four, four to 4-1. Four, 4-4 four, four to 4-2. Four, and then 4-4 four, four to 4-3. Four, All over the country, the question is being asked. Can Mayo catch Cavan? Can Mayo take the lead? Can Cavan prove themselves the champions that they undoubtedly are by staying out there in front? These were the questions that were to be answered only by time. And here is the answer. Toonan to Paddy Smith. Paddy Smith of Cavan steers out into the center of the field where Mangi of Mayo gets it and there it is, the equalizer. And just look at the crowd, the way they cheer this scene. But all this time, Cavan are still out there in front. And Peter Donahue has again proved himself the match winner by getting a point and putting his team in front. Cavan were the winners at the end despite late challenges by Mayo. The crowd cheer their leaders and their heroes as the game ends. Cavan 4-5, Mayo 4-4. And so, like Paddy Riley, the Sam Maguire Cup goes back to Bally James Duff. Commandant John Joe O'Reilly is presented with the cup on stand by the president of the GAA. Well done, Cavan. Well done, Mayo. Place Liam Liverain. And thank you both for a thrilling hour on Sunday, September the 26th.